Hey everyone, welcome back to the series where I build YouTube's first DIY soldering station that's entirely made from scratch. We transformed a piece of a laundry rack into a soldering iron, used 100% salvage components to make a controller board for it, so now the last thing to do is to put everything in a fancy enclosure and we are ready to rock. To start off, I did a rough mock-up in CAD to decide on the dimensions of the parts I'm gonna have to cut and this is what it's approximately going to look like, so without further ado, let's start slicing up some plywood scraps. There is something I find weirdly unsettling about the fact that, using CAD I can basically fabricate my own kit for a project, including the instruction manual, and then assemble it afterward. It somehow makes building stuff so much less fun to have all the parts prefabricated from the beginning. Fun or not, since this soldering station has an integrated clamp to fasten it to the workbench with, the base plate and the rear panel have to be pretty hefty and connected via a dado joint to take up all the clamping force. So let's just go ahead and glue a few things together since we've still got a lot to cover in this last episode. I should also mention, always make sure you drill all the necessary holes before gluing things together, cause sometimes it turns out to be pretty impossible afterwards, then checking to see if it's square using one of the side pieces. Now you can see the power cord goes through this hole and gets clamped down by this plastic strain relief bar thingy I salvaged from some broken device. The transformer will sit on these spacers, the lower one of which has a little notch cut out for cable management, and before I glue these on here as well, I actually need to drill the mounting holes for the transformer because again, in situ it'll be pretty much impossible to reach it with the drill. Next I need to drill some holes for cooling air into the side pieces and accordingly I spent quite some time mulling over whether I should add active cooling to this thing or not because the electronics do get quite hot after all and with it being enclosed in an insulating box basically I figured the heat dissipation might be actually bad enough for it to overheat Whatever, long story short, I am going to add this tiny 4010 cooling fan I got off AliExpress for 83 cents because I do want to use this soldering station without having components burn out 10 minutes after I publish this video. To figure out where exactly the fan goes, since I don't have that much space to work with, I temporarily mounted the transformer using only two screws, as well as the little strain relief because these things take up a lot of space already, so now I can place it on its side just like it's gonna be screwed on later. And then, as you can see, there is not much space left. It's just about enough for this fan, and it doesn't make any sense to put it straight because of this huge bevel here. So I'm going to use this piece of plywood as a spacer, put it on top and flush with this edge so now I can put the fan against the piece of plywood like so, eyeball it to make sure it's roughly in the middle. So now it's parallel to this edge and now I can draw the outline of the fan as well as the mounting holes and even the round inside because the inside is where the holes for my cooling grill are gonna go. That's it. To reduce tear out on the other side, it helps to clamp a piece of scrap wood to the underside of your workpiece to sacrifice, as well as using the highest speed setting of your drill press. Ideally, you should also start drilling from the side you want to look nice, which I definitely did not and heavily regretted afterwards. This plywood is just awful for artistic stuff like this, I really should have started drilling from the outside instead. On the other side I put the grill just roughly behind where the heatsink is going to be, making sure to drill all the holes from the outside in instead of from the inside out, so there's no tear out. The weird hole I'm drilling right now needs to be there because the next part I'm going to do is this big chunk of wood. This is basically the stand for the soldering iron, it's gonna be glued to the right side of the soldering station and it'll have the weird coil thingy on top in which you can put the soldering iron as well as the soldering tip cleaning tray in the middle. This is basically just a tin can which I carefully dissolved all the labeling off using acetone. It'll sit in a big hole in the middle in this board. 
this is going to be cut off at an angle and then the reason for this hole is because I decided the most convenient spot to put the USB port for plugging the soldering iron into was going to be the right side of the soldering station since putting it on the left side and being right handed doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to put it on the right side but this is basically the most inconvenient spot to put it in terms of cable management and fabrication because it basically means I need to drill a hole all the way through this board lengthwise and then route out a little pocket for the USB port to sit into. It's definitely not a very conventional way of doing it but that doesn't really stop me from doing it anyway, does it? So this already looks quite promising so far, this is pretty much everything that's gonna be glued together into one piece, except for the little clamp thingy which is still missing underneath here, but so far this is one piece and it's gonna stay that way. Everything else, all the remaining pieces of plywood are gonna be glued together separately into one cover, which simply screws on here. This is basically one of the main reasons for having a bandsaw as huge as this one. I need to unscrew this to put on more tape, drill more holes, and then I can glue on the last panel. Yeah, this is only very slightly sketchy. As usual, I went quite a bit over the top with the amount of screws I used. There really wouldn't have been need to put four screws on this side. Don't really know why I did that, but I did it. So now with the entire thing nicely enclosed, I can start sanding everything flush. This time though, I'm using the big belt sander because it's more powerful. Next, I went ahead and designed a nice looking user interface in Inkscape and printed it off on the last yellow paper we had left. So now I can cut one of these out and glue it onto the box, which gives me the exact locations for the holes I need to drill, as well as all the nice markings and stuff. And if I somehow mess it up, which is definitely possible, I still have 5 attempts left. Gluing on things like this is pretty nerve-wracking, because you need to spread the glue on the paper in order to let it expand, but if it soaks all the way through, the print starts to get blurry, so after careful positioning I press it on with a pen and immediately hit it with hot air to prevent the ink from spreading. The weird heat gun, by the way, was one of these hot air hair curlers, of which I cut the tip off after it ended up in my possession. Okay, that went on quite well. I certainly hope it's straight, but it definitely helps doing a few dry practice runs beforehand, as well as having a good straight object to spread out the glue. With the lamination successful, I can cautiously sand off the overhang. Now, since I would risk tearing up the paper with any normal drill bit, I'm using the Dremel tool to bore through the panel and then use a whole lot of elbow grease to widen these holes with a file till an LED fits through. The same goes for the boost button, except here I was a little too impatient and dinged up the pristine surface with a file in a few spots, which is very annoying. You know what guys, I'm going to finish this soldering station in a big montage. I am so sick of this video, it's been the longest any video has ever taken me to film. I started out in January and as I'm saying this right now, we have April. It's been a freaking journey and I'm so sick of it. 
I just wanted to be done. So since most of the things I'm going to do now are rather unconventional and I don't really recommend doing it that way anyway, let's just do it as a nice montage with an occasional bit of text on screen to explain what I'm doing. Please enjoy. Mm -hmm. 